Hey folks, you really have to feel more than just a little bit sorry for the R9 285. It's a graphics card which features quite frequently on a lot of recent worst GPUs lists, and it's always something that I can never get my head round. As ever though, curiosity has gotten the better of me here, so today we're going to be taking a look at this MSI R9 285 2GB which I bought back in 2017 for around 40 quid in an online auction. It overheats and it's more than a little bit messy, but I think there's maybe more to the 285 than it gets credit for. But first up, we're going to need to discuss what the 285 actually is and perhaps shed some light onto why it's got such a reputation as being a bit of a disappointment. From 2011 to 2014, AMD were on a bit of a rebranding role, enhancing and rebranding their much loved HD7900 series cards as the R9 280 and 280X, pleasing gamers everywhere with great performance and affordable price. But at the end of 2014, rumours started circulating that AMD had a new revised GPU up its sleeve, with both modern features and lower power consumption, and as a modern direct replacement for the 280 and the 280X which at the time were simply tearing up the mid $200 segment of the market, and in October of 2014, the 285 was released. The 285 is, well, five more than the 280, so it would probably lay waste to the rebranded HD7900 series cards, right? Well, no. The new GCN 3.0 GPU named Tonga was certainly more efficient, of that there is absolutely no doubt, having a TDP of 190 watts compared to the 250 watts of that 280X, but some key features which had contributed to the HD7900 series card's longevity had actually been cut back on. The 3GB memory buffer became 2GB along with a slimmer memory bus, and the core count was also on par with the R9 280 or HD7950 rather than the 280X. So as a replacement for the legendary HD 7970 which everyone thought they were getting, the 285 released with underwhelming specs, with only the fact that it's a refined GPU core and a smaller manufacturing node with lower power consumption in its favour. But was it actually an underwhelming card? And is it any use today? Well, before we answer that question, we first got to fix this one, this MSI gaming branded 285 2GB. 42 quid on eBay last year with a minor overheating problem at full load. So before we can see if the R9 285 is actually any good, we're going to have to strip this card down and see what's going on. Early testing showed that only one of these fans were actually spinning up and as far as I'm aware on the twin Frozer 4 cards, both fans should be spinning at all times. And since the fans are controlled by the same 4 pin header on the PCB, this is pointing to a burnt out fan, with the other one likely to follow soon. Disassembly is easy for this card, simply remove the four screws surrounding the GPU to release the PCB from the heatsink, and if you're going to do a deep clean and want to remove the back plate, remove all the other screws on the back. With this card we get nice chunky heat pipe and fin arrangement, as well as that nice strengthening plate. The one working fan when testing it out with the card, it started to feel a little bit grindy, and spun a lot less freely than I would have liked. And the thermal paste, well, it was still passable but it had started to dry up, probably likely due to the lack of heat dissipation with the broken fans. So this card should actually be a relatively simple fix, but the problems that we're seeing, the broken fan and the underperforming thermal paste would certainly account for the thermal spikes and shutdowns that the seller reported. The fans, the shroud and the heat pipe arrangement are all kind of intertwined so we we'll actually need to remove everything to give this card a good deep clean. Each fan is simply held onto the shroud by three screws, but at the same time the cables are actually routed through the heat pipe, so you've got to be aware and try and get everything disassembled at roughly the same time. Both fans are connected to the card's PCB with a split cable and a 4 pin connector. Thankfully though, MSI cards, especially the twin Frozers, are wildly popular and that means there's a lot of used parts online. Thankfully MSI actually used the same 2x90mm fan arrangement on a number of cards in the twin Frozer 4 range, for both the green and the red teams, so finding a suitable replacement isn't really going to be a struggle. To be honest with you, I probably paid a little bit over the odds for a working used fan at £10 delivered, as new fans can actually be had on AliExpress or eBay from around the same price, but they generally have to come from overseas and have long lead times. Time is money after all. Now I'm sure some of you lot have seen Brian over at Tech Yes City recommending cleaning PCBs with brake cleaner and WD-40, and generally I do not like to argue with the Yes Man. The only snag today though is that when heading down to get some more brake cleaner and go to Yes Town on their 285, 
ECC, that's electrical contact cleaner, was actually two quid cheaper than the brake cleaner, so I opted for that instead as technically it is a better option even though in reality there's nothing really wrong with using car products. All in all, the ECC and the WD-40 set me back less than 10 quid, and that will last a good few GPU refreshes. So the first port of call is to clean the GPU heatsink. Now you can use a mixture of isopropyl alcohol and cotton swabs, or if it's really tough, you can use the ECC cleaner to give it a good soaking and use a cloth to get a bit more pressure on and clean off all the old thermal paste. After removing all the thermal paste, I simply doused the whole thin arrangement in ECC. The ECC will start to dissolve dust and hair, and it's a great way to clean hard to reach places without the use of Q-tips. Once all the debris had been removed, I simply left the heatsink to dry. You can use a heater of course if you want to speed things up, but even on its own the ECC will actually evaporate in less than an hour, but you do want to make sure that everything is bone dry before plugging it back into your system. Now onto the PCB and to do something that I never actually thought I would try. Mounting the PCB onto a, a drainage board of some sort, mine's just the lid of a box turned upside down, I completely doused the front and back of the PCB in electrical contact cleaner and simply let it drip dry. Now, just like the heatsink arrangement, doing this it might seem a bit counterintuitive dousing a GPU in a liquid, but ECC is completely safe to use, and it will dissolve a lot of the dust and grime that builds up on cards, and it reduces the need for you to go about touching it with a cloth trying to clean it up. And just like the heatsink, after it had been completely doused multiple times, I left it to drip dry and placed it in front of a fan to help aid up the drying process. While letting everything dry off, I did actually go to town a little bit on the shroud, buffing it up and cleaning off all the dust. Now, I've probably been watching too much Tech Air City, but finishing touches like WD-40 on the PCB and shroud give it that nice shiny new look, and it does genuinely look really nice. Simply spray a little bit on and buff in the residue. What you're left with is a card that's not only looking fresh, but is also protected, as that WD-40 creates a sort of dust barrier across your external components. And by the time the new fans arrived a week or so later, everything was looking pretty much spot on. So with the new fans ready to breathe new life into this fresh looking 285, reassembly was simply a reversal of taking it apart, remembering to add some new fresh thermal paste onto the GPU itself. And after a little bit of elbow grease and less than 20 quid on new fans and cleaning products, I have ended up with a nice clean 285 that has sent me back £59, or just over half of what a retailer like CEX would charge you for such a card. So, it looks good, but has it solved our overheating issue, or is it going to simply explode when I plug it back into the PC? Well, I'll tackle the second question first. No, it doesn't explode, it boots in absolutely perfectly, and it has actually solved the overheating issue. Both fans are spinning perfectly, they're really quiet as well. The removal of all that dust and grime and replacing the thermal paste means that this card is as factory fresh as a three-year-old card can actually be. It's always a good idea when deep cleaning a card like this to run it through multiple stress tests in order to test and assess stability. I've been using Fire Strike and putting it on a loop, and to be honest with you, it flew past it 99.7 odd percent over the space of a couple of hours. But before I close this video on this nice little 285, I did actually want to try it and see if it actually gamed and if it was really a that big a disappointment. So I jumped into Far Cry 5, settings tweaked to saturate that 2GB frame buffer. And, to be perfectly honest with you, it's much better than it gets credit for. It's a 2GB card for sure, and we do have to temper our expectations accordingly, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Nothing at all. I mean, last year I mentioned how the HD 7870 XT exceeded its 7870 expectations, and I thought it was a great card. Well, this actually performs a little bit better than that in my initial testing, and it's only really because it's sort of positioned above the 280 or 280X in the numerical naming convention that it's seen as a disappointment. As a budget card, it is actually good, and it's definitely a card that I'm going to spend a little bit more time benchmarking to see what can actually be done with it. The stigma is understandable, but in 2018, it could actually be just the budget gaming card you're looking for at a time where RX 560s and GTX 1050s are going for well over 150 bucks. So that's the R9 285 rescued from a life of overheating and grime. 
and looking pretty sweet. It's definitely going to need to be tested out some more to see how it stacks up in a full suite of benchmarks. For now though, that's about it. Have any of you actually ever owned a 285? Have you heard of it? Or maybe you've seen this rebrand, the R9 380? I would love to know what you actually think of it, and what you think of the old twin frozers, as I do love the almost industrial look that some of these older MSI cards have got. But I'll call it a day there folks, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the comment section down below, and in the next video.